going to log into my Twitters. Get into the Twitters. And welcome to another episode of 72 Pin Connector. With us this week, we have Tom Webster. Howdy, everyone. And Adam Jordan. Hello, 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 hello. How are you guys hello. doing this uh, hello day? Hello? Hello? Oh, good. Hello. I took hello. a nap after work and I feel much better. Nice. It was like a two hour nap. God, I wish I had time <laughs> to take a nap. Napping is something I just don't do. I oh, don't. I nap. I do because I have to sometimes. Nap hard. Because I sleep so bad. I just poorly, bad, badly. I just find napping just is a huge waste of time. It's like you're falling asleep oh, during the like core hours. It feels like an absolute waste of time, but sometimes it's way worse not to. Because like the if, time is still wasted, but I'm miserable the whole time. Yeah. Unless I sleep a little. <laughs> yeah, like if I'm if I'm just dragging ass, I'm just like sitting there like not even paying attention to the TV show I'm watching, I'm going to fall asleep. It's a matter of time. I might as well do it in a bed, comfy as fuck. Yeah, but uh, see that stuff I do at nights when I'm when I'm calling it a night. I'll go in, I'll lay down, and that's it. But it's not something I'm going to do midday. Maybe every once right. I'm watching a football game or something, I'll doze off for like five, ten minutes. I'll wake back up. Bam. Okay, let's go. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so you two are like perennial tired and busy and worn out. And oh, my God. Uh, yeah, I can't help it. I'm sorry. As soon as I'm, I'm less busy and more just tired all the time. I'm not really that busy. <laughs> so it's 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 finally getting to me. I, I miss yeah. I miss my gaming PC. I really, really miss my gaming PC. I so thought have I you could, done any gaming at all this week? Uh, actually, I played a little bit of Dota. Um, and by a little bit, I mean I played one game of Dota, um, mm. which, which was fun. We got our ass kicked, but it was fun. Um, I want to say it was just a, a bot match uh, with, with a, mm. a friend of the podcast. Um, but it was, it was good. I, I miss Dota. I like it. And uh, it keeps getting more and more polished every time I play it. It's, I haven't played it in some time. Um, the last time I played it was before I moved to Seattle. It was before the trait system. I have not played a match at Dota since they've completely revamped it. Wow. And I mean, it's, oh. it's changed a lot because they've added, instead of just being pure tech tree off of levels like it was, there's mm -hmm. your tech tree with skills and then there's these hidden attributes that you can get every 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Which is really weird. Yeah, it's a it's a hmm. totally totally different experience now than it originally was. So how how often do they do updates and balance things and all that? Just about constantly. Um, yeah. Every I want to say every week, every two weeks or so, um, they'll come out with a minor patch that'll you know introduce bug fixes. They try not to do rebalancing hmm. too often, like like major stuff, uh, just because. Um, you know, having having a meta, having a, you know, a set rule or, or set community guideline for how the game's supposed to be played is uh, mm -hmm. is part of Valve's, uh, you know, plan for the game. So if they change it too okay. much, they push people away. Um, right. Yeah. But I as far as bug fixes go, I mean, I'll get uh, sometimes a couple updates a week. Major rebalancing, I want to say, happens about once every six months, once every year. Uh, in mm -hmm. this this recent huge patch, uh, you know the the patch that people joke about and they call it Dota Three, uh, completely <laughs> changed the game. Uh, I mean, it, yeah. it plays very differently today than it used to. Uh, in some ways, no. that's good. In some ways, that's bad. Uh, all of the old stuff you relied on goes out the window, uh, but there's new opportunities to build stuff now. So, hmm. yeah, nice. It's interesting. Um, does does Rocket League do any rebalancing or, or anything like that uh, there's no. not a whole there's lot of rebalancing it can do yeah that's, that's so, kind of what i well, figured there's adjusting early on, boxes yeah which they have done early on uh the cards were a little more different than they are now especially when it comes to like turning radiuses and stuff uh you know merc the big van it handled like a big van and other As cars didn't yeah so so they kind of you know over the course of time uh 
Most of the turning radiuses are pretty similar. I mean, they're still different, but they're not as different. And, um, you know, they leveled out a couple of the car's hitboxes to be a little more like the visual model or a little, you know, middle of the road, I guess they would say. So they did a little bit, but it didn't really change much of anything. Yeah, I don't see Rocket League as being a game that there's ever going to be after the initial. Once everything's settled yeah. in, it's one thing. But actually right now, it's, it is what it is. They're going to add new maps. They're going to add new cars. Mm. Every once in a while, they'll break a physics engine a little bit with a map, and they'll fix it. Every major update, they'll break a physics <laughs> engine in some way or another. A physics and or car engine. But all some, they do is... Some sort of thing that's in, integral to the gameplay. We'll yeah, but at that point, <laughs> they just fix it, and then yeah. it's back. But it's not actually like a balancing thing. Yeah. Well, there was an issue with a couple of the cars where, like, if you landed exactly on all four wheels at the same time, it would, like, kind of rebound and bounce and wobble a little bit. And hmm. it was messing people way up. And this was the most common car in the game, especially at the pro level. So Octane? Yeah. Ah. Uh. If you didn't, la- if you did, if you landed on all four wheels at the exact same time, like after off a wall or something, it would, you would kind of get out of control for a second because it would bounce as you landed. I, I just, I really wish, you know, the esports community cannot take Rocket League seriously until Psionics nerfs cars. <laughs> they just need to nerf the cars. The cars. Nerf the ball stands the no chance. It gets pushed around. When you're playing on the yeah. ball team, <laughs> you are destined to get pushed around and shoved into a goal and explode. I mean, there's there's mm-hmm. no other way. No one can win when you're playing the ball team. Right. <laughs> uh, what uh, else? Have you played anything else, Tom? Uh, Just a little actually, bit of Dota? Yes, yes. Uh, I have played uh, other stuff. Um, so I'm, I am missing my gaming PC a lot. Uh, I, I am feeling the urge to play Dark Souls. And that's mostly because today I watched uh, the newest video uh, of a uh, playlist that this guy put together on YouTube. It's amazing. It's called The Dumb Shit's Guide to Dark Souls. Now, I've already <laughs> beaten Dark Souls, but these videos are fantastic. Uh, there's this area in the game where you're fighting ghosts, and he calls it ghost busting. And every time he's like fighting a ghost, he plays the Ghostbusters theme song. And they're <laughs> tiny, compressed little videos. With most Dark Souls yeah. streams, it's very serious and long-winded, and you're watching a video for two hours on a single area mm-hmm. to try to get your strategy right. This guy's like, okay, run down the stairs, uh, grab a rubber fist, punch a ghost. Uh, it, it literally, like, a, a section that'll take you three hours, four hours to get through is condensed into 10 or 15 minutes. It is nice. great. Lots of post, I'm sure. Punch a ghost. Sometimes yes. that's worth it. <laughs> yes, uh, it's it's very cool. Um, other than that, I play a little bit more of Hyper Light Drifter, uh, which is good. It's almost satisfying my need for Dark Souls, but not quite. Um, <laughs> the more I play it, the more I understand that it's a fucking beautiful game. Oh, my God. Mm. Uh, everything about it, like all the little pixel arts, the effects, the particles, everything in that game is beautiful. Um, and it, it controls really well. Uh, other than that, a little bit of Mario RPG. I've actually never played through Mario RPG, uh, but I can see uh, where Paper Mario kind of led off from that. Uh, it's it's very similar in certain ways. Uh, and then uh, there's a game that actually Irk and I played, but I'm going to let Irk kick that one off. Yeah. Um, so today, hence our background, was the release of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe on the Switch. Nice. And so, you know, I got in here early, was setting up some stuff, forgot to throw mono on. Sorry, everyone watching in the live stream. That is the reason for the left right split with Tom and I. But because of that, I was able to play Mario Kart. So fuck y'all. I don't care. I got some Mario Kart in. Uh, it'll be uh, it'll be fixed on YouTube and in the actual audio podcast. So don't worry about that. Yeah. But yeah, so um, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe just launched today. So um the Switch library is slowly growing. Uh, what they keep adding is good. Earlier this week was uh, Puyo Puyo Tetris, which for those of you who don't know, it's half Puyo Puyo, which is like a uh, Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. It um, Things will drop if there's nothing under it to fill bottom. And then it's also Tetris, which plays like regular Tetris. You keep flipping back and forth. 
I, I love cool. I love the Americanization that we've got going on here. It's like, well, Puyo Puyo. Well, it's kind of like Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. But Mean Bean Machine was a Puyo Puyo clone that came first. Yes, we don't, I Americans don't mean know about bean it. Machine. Mean, mean Bean, bean machine, machine was, was great. my jam back in the day. But but let's let's be real. We copied it. It's like when when we say, oh, man, have you tried this poutine stuff? It's great. It came from like Austin, Texas or something. And someone's like, dude, <laughs> we ate this in Canada for breakfast for like 200 years. <laughs> well, no, it's just people here aren't familiar with the game because the games industry does a lot of that. There's a lot of games in Japan that doesn't make it to England, America. It's games appropriation, man. We, we need to fight for, for gaming equality. <laughs> uh, get out of here. But, um, so that was launched earlier this week, and it's a really good game. Um, I will end up getting it at some point, but I didn't pull the trigger because we pulled the trigger today to get Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Hmm. So it is the same Mario Kart 8 that was on the Wii U. It has all the DLC, a couple extra racers, and actual battle arenas rather than just battling on racetracks, which I guess was the hmm. Wii U version. It hmm. plays really well. Nice. It's really enjoyable. Um, it's, it's Mario Kart. A um, lot of the people who reviewed the original 8 claimed it as one of the best Mario Karts to be made. And I will say it's really good. From, from the little you I agree? of it, yes. And it's going to take some getting used to. I've been out of the Mario Kart game, so I can't mm. really directly say it because this one has all the motorcycles the go-karts the big trucks all that fun stuff oh. with paragliders and stuff like that Jesus. from from the 20 minutes that i've played this game i would say yes it is one of the best mario karts ever made <laughs> so um it's just really cool to see the switch and it's huge success i mean it's sold 2.5 million already um and it's just taking off this well and everyone hit on it because how bad its launch lineup was which it was mm -hmm. but the games that are slowly rolling out are really good games that'll keep you busy for a little bit zelda is a huge epic takes a long time mario kart's a game you'll play over and over and over puyo puyo tetris is something you'll keep going over and over and both of those have online modes where Puyo Puyo, you're going to get murdered. But if you're an average player, you can still have some fun with Mario Kart, at least. And, and not to mention, 1-2 Switch is a game that you'll remember for the rest of your life as the worst $50 purchase you've ever made. <laughs> you'll be on your deathbed thinking about, wow, I could have bought anything. I could have bought, like, five Chipotle burritos, and I would have been even more satisfied than 1-2 Switch. <laughs> so um, I would was... take five Chipotle burritos over 1-2 Switch any day. Right? So um, there's something like five million and some odd games sold for the Switch so far. Uh, one million of those was one two switch. Which wow! And one million of those people are like, oh, whoops. It's <laughs> it feels like it should be unpacking, but whatever. Um, and then yeah. two point seven five million of those were Zelda, which is a quarter of a million more than what was actually sold, or switches were sold. Still really fucking weird. And the rest of it, there was no direct statistic. But yeah. what they've had going on is, yeah, some indie games on there, Binding of Isaac, Snake Pass, some really cool games. But they've been taking the Neo Geo library and re-releasing these games as first-party games on the Nintendo... Oh, I shouldn't say first-party, not the right term, but releasing them on the Nintendo Switch. Not as virtual console, but as actual full-scale digital games. Well, because the, the Switch's hardware allows it to play games that came out, you know, 15 years ago very well. Nothing else, but the 15 year old games, it plays perfectly. No, I, I would say the Switch, it's, the games have been playing very well on it. I, I really, really love this console. It's super, super slick so far. But the fact is, there is more games available that was made before 1998 on the console than there are games after, I believe, at this yes. point. <laughs> I, I will, I will say, for, for all of my shitting all over the, the Switch's hardware and, and Nintendo's choices in that matter, uh, the patch for Zelda, uh, the, the last time I played it, I didn't see any slowdown. I didn't see any frame rate drops. It, it did alleviate a lot of those problems. They still happen. Okay. They absolutely still happen. So I don't want to give false hopes, but it is better. Um, yeah, Zelda. God, that game's good. But uh, that's, <laughs> that's about it so far. Next week, I'll be able to tell you a lot more about Mario Kart. Um, jumping mm -hmm. on a plane tomorrow morning, so I'll be playing a lot of Mario Kart on the plane. So, um, nice. yeah, I'll be able to test that mobility out first hand finally. Um, other than that, did a little bit of Rocket League. Um, did some Battlegrounds. Finally won my first batch of Battlegrounds. Yes. Man. Nice. That was so good. That, um, that was so good. So there's a few um, strategies that are starting to emerge that are 
I don't want to say cheap, but they're no. very um, deceiving. <laughs> yeah, Tom, you have to you have to hear this. So um, <laughs> the first one's not one we use. So I'm going to hit this one first. It's the concept of you get in a vehicle, you'll flip and like let's say the circle's getting smaller, so you kind of have an idea where it's kind of central or, or uh, centraling around. You intentionally flip your vehicle in the middle area of the circle. People will not know you're in that vehicle. You stay in there. You can shoot out of the vehicle and people will not realize you're in there. If they realize you're in there, they can kill you. And you are visible. It's just people don't think of checking a flipped over Jeep for people. Yeah. However, there was an issue pre big patch where bushes, if you were on high uh, quality mode, you would have all these bushes. You go to low quality mode, half of them are gone. So it wasn't a good thing to hide in because all you do is go low quality and you've seen most people. Now, both qualities had the same. So there's this huge strategy coming up where as the circle gets smaller, you don't hide in buildings. You pop a squat in a bush. You find you a good <laughs> bush that when you're crouched <laughs> is just as tall as you so, and you yeah, crouch some of the Some of the bushes are just as tall as you. If you crouch down right in the middle of the bush, you're not invisible, but you're pretty close. <laughs> so... <laughs> me and Eric and d were playing and we got to the it wasn't the final circle but it was like the second to last circle so the circle was small and there was these guys in this house and we're kind of in the middle of a it's not a field but it's sort of open there's some trees around so <laughs> we we pop in these we all stand in these bushes there's two bushes probably what 20 feet apart 30 feet apart enough where you wouldn't think teammates would be yeah so we're, I'm standing right in the middle of this bush, plain sight, so is Eric, and two teams start fighting. Like, I'm, I'm sitting there in the bush, we're looking around, there's the teams ahead of us in the house, and there's a team, I see a team coming from behind us over the hill, and they come down the hill, and they run right past me and Eric, <laughs> completely oblivious, and we're sitting there, I'm talking like, I could have ran up and shot one of them with a pistol, like... I, I probably could have ran up to them and hit them with a melee weapon before they knew what would happen is how close we were. So those two teams start fighting right in front of us and we're just watching them kill each other. Two teams of four. And it, the one team dies and the circle closes in away from the bushes. So we had to, you know, we had to leave the bushes eventually. And then I think we ended up what getting second place. Yeah, that was you and D-Laz were in that one. And then you and yeah. I did the strategy again the very next game. But yeah. I've, been, I've hidden a bush on my own where it was a big squad match and everyone else died early. And there's this house right behind me. And literally five different teams fought around me without knowing I was there. Good God. So this strategy is super, super <laughs> effective right now in the game. And it's not, I don't want to call it cheap because there's things you can do to get yourself caught. So yeah. you hold alt so you can look around without moving. And then you go to check your inventory, you're all tapping out of the game. It's happened to me more than a couple times Ooh. so far. Yeah. <laughs> um, as well as your guns will stick out if you go to aim and stuff like that. So there are things that yeah. you will get fucked up with. And honestly, once you blow your cover, it's blown. So it's not like you're going to jump yeah. out, pop a guy and jump back in the bush very easily. Yeah. It's, but, one, it's one of those where people are going to start having a dedicated bush guy where it's like, all right, we've got this nice house. You watch all the bushes <laughs> with I, I the sniper don't. rifle. It's like you got a lot and of ammo, <laughs> pop one shot into yeah. every bush and if watch you, for if blood. If you see a car upside down, make sure to shoot at it. I, I don't like that terminology, though, the, the bush guy. Why don't you just call him George W? Just call him W. George okay. W. Dadum, w. you're W this match. <laughs> yes. Irk, Irk, you're Jeep guy. Jeep no, guy. no, what, what was the kid in Jurassic Park? The, the car fell on him uh, upside not, down. Not Billy. Um, oh, um shit oh man okay. i don't remember the no, no, I'm not gonna talk up on it but either but way, you, can, yeah. you can be him i'll be the jurassic park kid yeah and, and datum will be w but hold on if i'm the jurassic w. park kid and wouldn't that mean i'm inside the flip jeep yes and so yes since adam's and w, w would be inside the he's bush. inside the bush yes yes and you're just dead i'm just dead okay yeah 
<laughs> I like this. Right. How it would go. <laughs> I, I saw I saw a fantastic GIF on uh, on Reddit's gaming forum uh, or subreddit um, where someone took a motorcycle in Battlegrounds, ramped it off of a small hill, jumped off of it in midair. They landed and took a bunch of damage, but they killed like two or three people after nice. they landed. It was fantastic. I've seen some really cool stuff where there's a sniper on a house and people will take the car. And he would he ramped it up because there's a big uh, hill right beside the house. Lands on the roof with the guy, jumps out of the car and kills him. God. <laughs> so um, if the game is great, this is certain elements of it are kind of realistic with the way the bullet action works. A lot of parts of this game are not realistic at all. <laughs> yeah, but it's specifically just super the physics, fun. and specifically yeah. you driving a jeep and then like not even very fast hitting this piece of wall and getting stuck and then just exploding for no reason. So 72 <laughs> PC is still working on pulling together a lot of these videos with yeah. us and some uh, friends of ours. So hopefully we'll all be out for the next three weeks, but hopefully we will have a video posted sometime in the next month or two of some of the crazy shit we've been catching. We've got some really awesome ragdoll physics where a guy's running, gets shot and then just flies forward. Uh, we have this yeah. thing where I ramped this Jeep on top of a wall that had a hole in it. And the Jeep vibrated so much in that hole that it caused so much damage that it blew up Jesus. within a matter of a couple seconds. Yeah, you huh. just had the car wedged between the things and then it just blew up. It just boop. I, I saw that happen For to some guy <laughs> ran off of a hill and flipped his Jeep sideways and got caught between two trees and it blew up, <laughs> which was pretty entertaining. Yeah, if you wedge yourself between something, I think the collision detection continuously bounces you back and forth without ever mm -hmm. degrading the force. So mm -hmm. it's just an infinite amount of damage coming at you in a finite time. Now, if, if that becomes a big problem, I hope they fix a lot of it, but I don't hope they fix all of it. One of my yeah, favorite things so to I was, do... I was just about to say that. One of my favorite things to do in Grand Theft Auto 4 was to go to the Devil's Playground, or, or the swing set of death, depending on, on what you've called it, uh, <laughs> where there's this little park and there's a swing set where you can take your car and nudge like the, the edge of the swing set where it goes into the ground. Well, something was fucked up with those physics because it would actually move the, the post back a slight imperceptible amount. And the game would continuously build up force to try to move it back into its spawn location. And when it did, it would launch your car, sometimes far enough to land your car into the ocean. It was fantastic. We actually uh, got a <laughs> boat up there on the swing set. We spawned one in on top of it and it launched it into the ocean. It was really fucking cool. That's like some of the old Halo uh, flip tricks where you put a tank on a flip oh, tank. Yes. Flip the bottom yeah. tank and just whoosh. I forgot about yep. that. That was so fun back in the day. The Warthog jumps? Back in the day. Yep. Oh, God, Awkward. those were fun. But yeah, <laughs> Battlegrounds has... It's a really good game for early access. It's great. It ha, it's rough around the edges, but not mm -hmm. in a bad DayZ kind of way. In no. a really quirky, I kind of hope to keep some of this in the final game kind of way. <laughs> yeah. If they lose some if of this, stop, the game might lose some yeah. of its charm. If they left all the physics bugs in and just fixed like the combat stuff if there's anything or like server lag and stuff like that yeah i mean i would be completely fine with it i don't care now if my jeep is... gets wedged between two walls and explodes that's fine <laughs> and i mean that's not going to happen every game but when it does happen it's yeah. it's kind of it's, it's kind of cool if it, it happens moments. every game it's an issue well and you also yeah. learn it's some it's not an unpredictable thing it's like this is what the engine says if i wedge myself in a place i shouldn't be i'm probably gonna die don't do it yeah <laughs> so if I totally forgot what I was going to say, because now I'm, I'm talking to, to uh, Dark Soul Invader. Apparently, GTA 5 has the same swing set glitch, but on gates. Oh, oh no shit. Oh, my God. I'm going to have to try this out when I get my rig back. <laughs> I cannot wait. Don't yeah, make me I've... download Grand Theft Auto 5 again. That's like 60 gigs. Oh, oh, you so you have it, though? Yeah. Am I the only one here that doesn't have it? You don't have it? It's a have really GTA good game. I've actually, this is terrible, <clears throat> but I have it, and I've never played it online. I've never no played GTA online. Online is fun, um, but you have to... I played it a little bit. I am not in the mood for it anymore. It, it's very mm -hmm. grindy. Uh, it almost oh, feels okay. like an MMO unless you pay real-world money to get in-game money. Is it still like that, though? Because, I mean, the way that game's been growing, I feel that's probably not the case as much it's anymore. It's still really grindy. I thought it would just be a big sandbox. Um, it is a big sandbox, but everyone else has got sports cars and armor and jets, and you have a mm. pistol and a, a dirt bike. 
fair enough. And and I I played during Christmas, so I also dressed like an elf. Um, and what's <laughs> cool is they've got, um, they they've got a. Uh, a voice chat system that kind of works like I want to say they introduced this in Halo 2 and it was a big deal where if you're next to someone they can hear you but if you're far away they oh, can't yeah. yes it's it's really cool but I went I was like totally decked out in skin tight elf gear I looked fucking rad and this guy starts screaming uh you know homosexual expletives at me as <laughs> as loud as he can as he pulls up in his sports car and I, I get out, I get out of the car because I didn't know that the voice chat worked that way. I thought it was an NPC. I'm like, oh, I've got my pistol. I'm gonna fuck him up. And uh, um, he he pulls out a rocket launcher and uh, just toasts me right there on the spot, which was great. Yeah, um, <laughs> that voice chat when it's like that's really fun. Uh, Battlegrounds is like that. And it's just yeah, a shame and- that a lot of games integrated that and. Recent technology on PCs, it's always been avoidable, but in consoles, it's avoidable now by doing private parties and stuff like that. But the um, the battlegrounds, while it can work, it doesn't work if you're playing with people who are actually in groups together. Yeah, because they're just in Discord or TeamSpeak or something. Yeah, I kind of I kind of miss that because there's some things you can do in a game engine in a multiplayer environment to make the voice chat so much more immersive that you lose on something like Discord. So you and I were playing Elite Dangerous in VR. You know, we we were sitting there, we're in our spaceships, and we decided to use the voice chat in game. And what happened was we were like chasing down bandits and shit. When my ship got fucked up, my comms started getting fuzzy and crackly and fading out. When we got far apart from each other, the comms just stopped working altogether. We had to get our ships close for them to work. Uh, it it worked really well and it was really immersive. Uh, I mean, it's not perfect communications, obviously, because being imperfect is a little more realistic, especially for a game like that. Yeah, but that's that's actually really interesting. Um, I think that's one of the best use cases of it in a new game. It's just fucking discord. It's beautiful and it ruins it. <laughs> that's I, all I, I can like say. It. It's never have I had something so perfect <laughs> That ruins stuff so much. <laughs> yeah. I, I'd love to see, I really want someone to make a multiplayer horror game because you take horror games and you take multiplayer and the multiplayer completely cancels out any type of horror because you yeah. die and you're laughing with your buddies. I really mm-hmm. want like a, a group in the woods and something like picks your buddy off and it's like, oh shit, what the, and it just cuts as Mike. And, and the game tells you, hey, don't use Discord. Everyone use the in-game chat. We're going to make this really yeah. good. And it, it cuts their mic right when they die. So you're like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. What happened to Urk? Urk's fucking dead, man. Urk's not talking. Or like it can it can capture you and maybe he's not dead. We don't know, right? You could do a whole lot yeah. of things with voice chat outside That's a really good inside idea. of the like game that. engine. In a horror game, that'd be really good. Yeah. And yeah. I think you're playing in a game like that, I think the people you're playing with or being understanding do use that yes. because that is yeah. the game. Right. And that would be really fucking cool. Cause I know, um, like some of the really competitive games like, um, call of duty, they're, um, uh, search and destroy, which is one life you die, you're out. They wouldn't let you play that. If you were in an Xbox live party, you oh. had to be in game calm for that that's interesting that way when you Hmm. died you can no longer tell your teammates where everyone was instead what it turned into is everyone who's dead both teams go into a central pool and yeah you can imagine how that goes yeah get a lot of teenage (laughs) or teenage boys together on the internet that just died to each other flame on csgo actually (laughs) does that when you die you go to the death lobby um, hmm. And it because in, in Counter Strike, what would typically happen in, in casual matches, um, it, competitive tends to um, have stricter rules about who you can and can't spectate after you've died. Uh, but mm-hmm. in casual matches, you can sit and watch the enemy. You'd be like, "Hey, he's he's long A, he's long A. Go rush long A." Uh, but now you sit in the death pool. So if you say, "Hey, go rush long A," someone be like, "Fucking retard! He can't hear you. You're dead." It's like, oh, okay. He should still rush long. Yeah, he should, but he can't hear you. Okay, cool. <laughs> snarky, 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 snark. 
And Dark Soul points out, I probably overstated the age of the kids in the cod lobbies, <laughs> but I don't want to admit that I get killed by nine-year-olds. I mean, there's only so much my pride can take, and getting killed by kids who haven't even hit puberty yet is something that just hits my pride what, too hard. What, what else are they going to do? So so uh, we, we have jobs, we have responsibilities. Yeah. I don't mm -hmm. really want to overplay that too much. We don't really have lives. I have one of those things. <laughs> Responsibilities. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Responsibilities, no job. Fuck it. I thought but, it was the job. <laughs> but but nine-year-olds, I mean, what are they going to do? Like, long division and scream expletives on Xbox Live? I mean, that's basically their full-time yeah. job. God, life's good today. Right? Oh, and and yeah, uh, their, their uh, latest job is doing your mom, because they totally did. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah of course. Totally. Absolutely. Since yep. the age of seven on Xbox Live, knowing how to do your mom. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Xbox Live, doing your mom since 2004. God damn, how the fuck did we get there? <laughs> well, um, to reel it back in a little bit, Adam. Yes. It's been a half hour already, and what have you been playing? <laughs> okay, yes, I've been playing some stuff, and I'd like to talk about it. Uh, firstly, I played some Binding of Isaac. Oh, yeah. Which has been really nice to get back into. I've seen a lot of new stuff because I hadn't played much since the last update. Eric and I actually recorded a dual run where we played through the same seed, and we're going to make a little split screen video thing out of that. So keep on the lookout for that on YouTube, and I'm going to be playing more Isaac for sure. Yeah, I would like to Lots get a. Lots of fun. I would like to get a few of those videos up because I think they could be interesting. Get some of the shitty ones where we die really fast in really stupid ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that game's full <laughs> of those. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so did um, you guys use, like, the same seed when you did the, yeah. the runs? Okay, yep. cool. He started it. Um, he chose character at random. He uh, created the seed, gave it to me, and then we ran. Nice. That yeah. was pretty good. We it's both, a lot of fun. We both went all the way. We both made sure we did the... Uh, this time we made sure we did the same choices. But in the future, we might just let ourselves just go and just to see where we end up. We didn't necessarily make the same choices, well, but um, we, level level path wise, we oh, both went yeah. Polaroid. We both went. Um, well, I pretty much always go Polaroid anyway. What but, a chump! Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> um, so yeah, I played Isaac. Isaac's a lot of fun with friends. So um, yeah, if you think Discord. it's fun to play by yourself, jump in Discord, play some runs together with friends, talk about what you're doing. It's it's a lot of fun. Um, other than that, played some Battlegrounds, helped Eric win his first match, did Ooh, the yeah. Bush strategy, all the stuff we talked about earlier. You were much. W. You went full W. Yeah, I was, I, we went full W. Um, I played some Rocket League, uh, as usual. And speaking of which, I got something in the mail today. Which what did you get will, in the mail today? Hopefully this will uh, appear on camera properly. Let me... I see, I see something. I see, I see a ticket. Oh, does Ooh, that say that World is, Championships? That's it does. World Championships. That says RLCS Season 3 World Championships in so the Los ticket, Angeles. The ticket was like 5 bucks, but the Ticketmaster charge was like 500 right? Yes. Okay. No, the ticket was 50 Ticketmaster was, charge was 500 Yeah. So yes. $550 in the hole, not counting the plane <laughs> ticket and the hotel and the food and all that stuff. <laughs> yes, yeah, so you're going to be down so there with I'm some going. of the casual server guys having a good old I'm fucking going. time. Yes. We're going That's to RLCS. Awesome. It's going to be so fun. I've never been to California before, so I'm excited. California, well, okay. California's really big. I was, gonna, I was about to say it's nice. Some parts of California are nice. <laughs> that's, 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 no that's, one, a, that's, that's a pretty generalization there. Yeah. Uh, no no one California. state can ever be described by one adjective, except for Delaware. Sucks. I, Rhode Island <laughs> is small enough to be described like, it's all right, I guess. Clam I've never been to Rhode Island, but <laughs> no, I, I guess it can't be terrible. It's not big enough to be terrible. That was it's a not joke. big enough to be great. Dark Soul. Dark Soul asked <laughs> if it was really $500. No, no the ticket we, was no, no, 50 no. bucks. We, um, we joke because Ticketmaster usually charges you through the ass for ridiculous yeah, they bullshit. Really do. Like, oh, hey, mm -hmm. you've got this $15 ticket to this AAA hockey game where no one you know is playing, but it's hockey. Oh, by the way, there's a $25 service charge. And so, a seven dollar yeah. print it yourself charge. I want and to a be ten dollar fuck you charge. <laughs> so to be fair, they've positioned themselves to where they're the one everyone knows. 
a lot yeah. of the a lot of these services okay, do the same no, fucking thing, no, no. which is ridiculous. Yeah. I cannot excuse this. Like, you can get the tickets printed and mailed to you, like actual physical tickets. That's what but I did. Yeah. If you want to print it yourself, there is a print it yourself fee. That's Fuck so that. There's a that fee so for keeping stupid. it on your phone <laughs> and not actually printing something. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not that's not Ticketmaster. That's other people. That's right. what I'm telling oh, you. Yeah. You may be but, um, Ticketmaster. It's the entire industry. <laughs> I want I want someone. I want Valve. I want it, literally anyone. Like Monsanto could come out and say, "Hey, we're making a competitor to Ticketmaster. That doesn't suck." So I'd here's like, yeah, sure, fine. Here's Valve's Ticketmaster. Oh, you got your ticket. You have it on your smartphone. Okay, scanned in. Oh, I'm sorry, our service crashed. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, wait, hold on. The game's on a Tuesday. Yeah, we're gonna be down for a couple hours for me. <laughs> <laughs> All oh, Tuesday games are canceled. You got a you got a ticket. That's great. Uh, now to get your your beer and your popcorn and your soft pretzel, you might get the one you want if you open this crate for two dollars. Oh. And you open the crate, and you're like, ah, oh, it's just jalapenos. Ah, oh, that's okay, uh, I guess. <laughs> Actually, to be able to get access to more buy crates, the I might be ticket, able to build a sandwich. <laughs> to get access to buy the ticket, you first have to spend five dollars in concessions to yes. get access to the system. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but no, the Ticketmaster fees weren't bad. Actually, it was around fifty bucks after fees and stuff. Oh, that's not so bad at all. It was like forty three fifty general admission, and then it looks like fourteen fifty tax and fees or whatever. How quick okay. those it was sell out? on the ticket? Yeah. Huh? Did those sell out yet? I don't think so. No. And that was uh, slightly discounted because I bought it early. I bought it the day they released. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I I'm going. Really, it's going to be fun. I really I'm going to take a lot I, of video, so yes, prepare yourselves. I wish it was a closer drive. Yeah. Because I would be all for it. But Just fly down. If I can do it, you can do it. Man, I'm well, flying we're, too fucking much. We're, we're going to do TI yeah. if we can get tickets. Well, even if we don't get tickets, I want to go there for the atmosphere and everything. Yeah. And the secret mm -hmm. shop, damn it. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I'm going to take out, like, a mortgage for the secret shop. Tom's going to have to have a second full-time job just for what he's going to fucking buy. Yeah. Do you know anyone else who's <laughs> hiring? <laughs> I need secret shop money. Damn so, it, I got you this job. So, Tom, why do you want to work for Microsoft? Well, you see, I'm going to the international. Say no more, sir. We understand. <laughs> We understand. Ah. We will buy your ticket. <laughs> so, Adam, I have to ask. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've seen you've been playing one other game. Um, yeah, I forest. believe it's still in early access, and I have yeah. wanted to play that for some time and just never pulled the trigger. Oh, okay. How is it? Uh, I, didn't, I didn't play it much. I just played a little bit today. Um, every once in a while, I bought that game... Two years ago? Man. Yeah, it must have been at least a year ago. Probably more like two two almost three years ago it wasn't that long after it came out i don't think so every once in a while i'll pop it in just to see what's different or just to check it out i'll read the the change logs once in a while um it's one of the few early access games i think that have been consistently updated the whole time with new content and bug fixes and all kinds of stuff um yeah it's cool it's um i don't know how much it runs now price wise but uh, there's some decent content there. It's kind of it's a survival sort of build your base. The enemy AI is pretty cool. Um, so some of the trailers explore. I saw made it seem kind of horry. Is it sort of kind of got that element, or is it just the atmosphere is really dark? And well, hard you've to got see? The, the cannibalistic um, locals of the island will attack you at random. Uh, during the day, they're not as common, but they're still around. And then during the nighttime is when they'll basically storm your base sometimes bring out so your there's, dad yeah there's that aspect of it um there's a cave underground cave system that you can find places into and that's kind of more the horror part uh because all you have is a lighter to see a lighter not a torch a lighter, a lighter? Huh. i mean you can you can get a torch you can get a flashlight but initially you have a lighter which you see what four feet in front of you five feet in front of you oh god the anxiety so going, of that yeah so you're going through this cave system barely being able to see the floor in front of you and then all of a sudden you come up to this monstrosity of a mutant monster thing with like four legs and four arms and it's like fast no. and jumping around yeah it's no that that the cave system is definitely the horror part uh most of the game is more survival action a little horror 
but it's cool. Uh, it's a beautiful hmm. game. Yeah, that the it seems interesting to me, and it's just been a long, around so long, and it's still in early mm-hmm. access, which just makes me wonder: is the dev ever actually going to consider the game complete? I don't know. Um, I'm not sure how much is still left. Like, there's so, there's a little bit of a story quest thing, which I think is the least done part of the game. Um, I I I haven't looked at it too deep to see how close it is to being done exactly but um yeah it's constantly getting updates and optimizations and little new features icons new sound effects they like did a overhaul to some sort of rendering engine for stuff to make it run better oh nice it's all kinds of stuff but it's a cool game you can play multiplayer with friends now so you can do a dedicated server which they that was the newest update is they added dedicated servers for friends and stuff that's nice oh, so, so like you persist on that one of their own servers can other people get to it though i don't know how all that works because if it's a dedicated server i would think they would leave it open to public because for an indie group it sounds really expensive to have dedicated servers and let players in the community lock it yeah mm-hmm. i mean d- depending on their net code i mean if they yeah I don't want to get like too far into into tech on <laughs> on our gaming podcast and, and mm-hmm. not on my tech podcast, but uh, you know if if they throw it in Docker and it's like a you know hundred megs of RAM, you could you know pop ten of those up per box. Yeah, but that's if it's a really lightweight. That's true. Mm. I mean, it, it's probably not most game engine netcode is not lightweight. Um, it, it's theoretically possible. Oh yeah, I mean you can get the. A fucking monster box, right? Can't mm. charge you out the ass, but yeah. Sorry. Anyway, <laughs> anyways, but yeah, but yeah early it's, access. It's cool. um, actually, a game I really, really, really like is um, been updated a couple times since last time I picked it up. Factorio just had some big updates. Oh, cool! There's some new science stuff for it, so I'm probably going to pick that up as soon you as were I playing get that a chance. Heavily there for a while. Well, I have one factory I have over a hundred hours in. Jesus, yeah. and I scratched it or scrapped it because as soon as i discovered my fault because i mean that's the thing in this game you you build something for 15 hours realize you fucked up build start over build something for 25 hours realize you fucked up and i think i finally have a system where it allows me infinite scalability but when you zoom out of my factory it looks like a C, uh, motherboard with the main bus going through it and everything's <laughs> yeah. shooting off of it it actually looks like you're making a circuit board because of the way i'm doing that's awesome. this that's so, cool. so what I'm understanding is Factorio is literally just, it's a physical manifestation of a programmer's life. You build something for 15 months and then you take a step back and you look at it, you're like, wow, this is dog shit. Everything I've done is wrong here. So you tear off major pieces and then you rebuild it and then you're like, okay, cool. It works now. It's good. Whoa, wait, fuck. I fucked this up. This is totally fucking <laughs> wrong. We have to throw it away, get a new framework, hire a whole new dev team. We're rebuilding this son of a bitch right. And then you live with that for another year. And then you tear that one apart. And um, then so on. Close. The difference is on this, sometimes you can't tear it apart. Oh. You can get to the point where it's like, yeah, this isn't something I can salvage. So, so then you leave your job, you go to a new company, and you do the same exact yes, thing there. Okay, yes. cool, cool, got it. And by the way, it is multiplayer, and I do want to play with some people at some point. So if anyone on the stream is interested in it, or any of you guys ever decide to pull the trigger, would love it. I, I think I might. Yes, and uh, the way I play Factorio makes it possibly the worst run-based game ever. <laughs> <laughs> I realize that a 25 hour run is a fucking ridiculous run. Yeah. But I think that is it for what we've been playing this week. Has anyone had anything else they might've overlooked? Yes. Yes. We actually did overlook something, something huge. Hmm. So, so Danum is W you're Tim. The, the kid Tim. from Jurassic park. His name was Tim. 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 Uh, yes. Oh. No, Tim. Yeah, some who call him Tim. Tim. And, and when, <laughs> when you do the flip Jeep, you have to say in Discord and on the stream, so we're back in the car again. But I'm Tim. I'm not the girl. No, no. But Tim says that. Oh, okay. Yeah. You have to say that. Okay. Yep. Um, so if you're Activision, you are looking at sales numbers for Call of Duty. You see that year after year, they're just going down and down and down. 
no game in the past couple has been you know has sold better than the one previously and consumers are kind of losing faith in the yearly call of duty model yeah it sells really well compared to the competition but not well compared to its previous self so they looked at a popular franchise their main competitor battlefield like okay what the fuck is Battlefield doing? Why do people care about Battlefield now? Because Battlefield was shit, and now everyone loves it again. Oh my god, they went to World War I. How do we outdo World War I? Got it. <laughs> Got it. We'll do World War II. Okay, for clarity, that is absolutely not what happened. Um, since they've added... Um, this, is, um, this is Sledgehammer. So... Um, a couple years back, they added a three-year rotation on games. So this game has been three years in the works. Hmm. So that, that's why I do that. However, the name <laughs> of it. So they, yeah. did, they did pull a Battlefield on that. The last Battlefield was Battlefield 1. So this is COD WW2. That is the name. <laughs> Call of Duty WW2. Hey, you know what? It's not creative at all, but it is a thousand percent functional. Yes. And I can appreciate that. But in something I've heard. You know what you're getting into? Oh, yes. Call of Duty World War II. It's interesting. I, think, I already know what it's going to be. <laughs> They're not trying to do this like the rest of them, though. Yeah. Um, Modern Warfare. Modern Warfare 2. Advanced Warfare. It was a series. Black mm -hmm. Ops. Black Ops 2. Yeah. Black Ops 3. Yeah. It was kind of a series. And even I te mm -hmm. technically World at War was tied into that. World War II. What do you do after that? World War II 2. Two. World War II 3. It just doesn't there's, work. There's yeah. a whole in uh, extra credits. The fantastic game design YouTube channel dove into this a little bit, but there is so much more to World War II than Stalingrad and Normandy. There was so mm -hmm. many little tiny battles. You can go to fucking Africa and find incredible World War II battles if you're at all interested in the history of it. They could set a game there. They could pick the lesser known. Uh, hot spots of World War II because literally you have the entire world yeah. as your potential battlefield. You have the mm -hmm. entire like invention of the Marines and the Pacific yes. campaign of World War II. That, by mm -hmm. the way, the Pacific doc or, uh, movie from the people who made Band of Brothers, fucking phenomenal. But I would oh, love cool. to see one of those. I'm just happy that that we're getting out of the Middle East and and having you know generic enemies with with turbans. And, and we're going back to shooting who really needs to be shot, Nazis, right? <laughs> like <laughs> like true. the whole like perceived ethnic warfare of, of modern battlefields. Like, okay, it's, it's, getting, yeah. it's getting really old. We've it's, done it's, that it's, a lot. It's a little racist. Let's be real. Uh, in, in a lot of like horribly done shooters, it's just like, uh, I don't know. We'll throw some brown guy in and we'll shoot him. I don't know. Yeah. Give him a <laughs> turban. Make some like so, weird curvy text that, that'll do fine. <laughs> Don't worry about it. In, in Call of Duty, they had the wrong language for the wrong area of the world they were in. And oh, no God. one fucking noticed until someone was like, yeah. uh, that doesn't belong here. And it wasn't one of the developers. It's really sad. But <laughs> if you shoot Nazis, no one's going to fucking argue. Right. Right. The, the Germans, if, if you release a game in Germany where you shoot Nazis, they're like, yeah, just don't put any Nazi flags in it because that's illegal. But yes, please shoot all the Nazis, right? You're not <laughs> insulting anyone that doesn't really need to be insulted. Right. And so, there is... So oh, go ahead. After watching this trailer, um, saw the trailer, read the, the short article. It doesn't give a lot away. But I'm actually going to look closely at this. I'm going to keep my eye on this because it seemed way more story campaign focused. I was uh, going... Th they showed... It was very cinematic. It was gritty. It was dark. Uh, the graphics were good. I'm sure it's in-game engine, not necessarily gameplay, gameplay, but it might have been. You never know. But this looks cool. It seems like they're they've realized it seems like they're, they're trying. Making, they've been yeah. It seems like they're trying. They realize they've been making mistakes and putting out too many games in too short amount of time. It's getting worse and worse and more out of hand and out of focus and i'm hoping they get rid of some of the arcadey parts to it and focus more on the story and hopefully the multiplayer is good um from what i understand there's a single player campaign and a co-op mode which is a completely separate campaign oh that's it's not cool. the same campaign that's really cool yeah i yes. was really happy when i heard that I'm like that's really cool it reminds me of what Portal 2 did with their multiplayer. Which yes. was excellent. Yes, it was really I, good. So I'm just, actually looking forward to this. I'm going to keep my eye on it, 
it's I'm still going to be a little skeptical because it's still a Call of Duty title. I'm not a Call of Duty fan so much, but it looks I, cool. I used to love Call of Duty because I, I grew mm-hmm. up playing Medal of Honor, which was great. Uh, yeah. But until I want to say Medal of Honor Frontline, um, it, it was always, you know, you versus the world. Uh, Call of mm-hmm. Duty, especially the first Call of Duty, was really, hey, look, you're a gear in the machines of war. Uh, you will fight alongside people. There, there were some single, you know, solo missions, but the majority of the game was you and your comrades on the battlefield. And it really mm-hmm. felt like a more accurate game. It didn't feel like Doom with a World War II skin like Medal of Honor felt like yeah. sometimes. Medal of Honor is great. Uh-huh. Don't get me wrong. I fucking love yeah. Medal of Honor. But it wasn't a battlefield-centric game. You weren't fighting mm-hmm. alongside people most of the time. Uh, Call of Duty really made it more realistic and call of duty you know one was incredible Uh, i think they had some expansion packs uh call of duty 2 was fucking amazing that was uh a launch title for the 360 and one of the best world war ii shooters i've ever played Uh, i'd like to see what they do with this um and I, i just i really have one hope for call of duty and that's that they get rid of treyarch they have no business making games anymore every call of duty game they made has been really lazy Black Ops is possibly the best-selling franchise under Call of Duty's name. I didn't like Black Ops. Black Ops was really good. Black Ops 2 was really, really, really? good. I, I didn't like any of the Black Ops. I thought they were... The, it, wasn't, it wasn't a bad game. It was just so fucking mediocre. World at War was also Treyarch. I didn't like World at War. I like World at War. Oh, Actually, I, like I, World at War. I think Treyarch is... Oh, I shouldn't say it. Because I've... Black Ops 2 is when I really started to fall off the end with them. Like, Modern Warfare, mm-hmm. loved it. I think that is what that... Granted, the CODs before that were good. That is what put them on the map. Yes. That is what made them, okay, this is the alternative yeah. to Halo. Uh, Modern Warfare mm-hmm. is one of the most important games in the first-person shooter genre. Uh, it, yeah. it did so much for multiplayer. It did so much for single-player. It was a single-player military shooter that actually made you give a shit and feel something in the gameplay. It was very, very mm-hmm. well done. Um, I... Or- Game Informer had a interview with the creator because he used to be with uh, Medal of Honor. And when they made this, he made one very thing clear. This has to be 60 FPS. That is why Modern Warfare 4 felt so much different than any other shooter at that time. It was 60 frames per second on the 360. Nice. And that is why it was always so much smoother. It just felt better, especially if you had an HD TV, you would notice it. If you was on a uh, tube, because back then, I mean, people were still using a lot of projection. Yeah. So you wouldn't notice it as much, but if you was on an HD TV, you would notice that. And actually, that's mm-hmm. that's one of the it played well on a on a standard def TV. Uh, a lot of the 360 games are like, oh, my God, high def. It's the latest, greatest thing. And their interfaces fucking sucked on anything that wasn't, uh, you know, a mm. 16 by 9 HD TV. It shrank the font. And yeah. It was terrible. Yeah. It, you yeah, literally you had to it. stand next to the TV to read this fucking text. Uh, uh, was it Dead Rising? Dead Rising was one of the worst yep. offenders for that. Um, but, but Call of Duty scaled really well. It wasn't it wasn't as beautiful as it should have been, but it scaled really well. Yeah, and if you're going from HD to non-HD, you can't expect it to look beautiful. Right. You just want it to be functional. Yeah, and mm-hmm. it absolutely was. But yeah, I'm, I have promise for it. I'm just ex- hoping they take the kill streaks back. Get those rowed back in. I like some variety, but let's, let's bring it back a little bit. And also another great thing about World War II, I don't think there was people running on walls shooting Nazis. So I think run wall, run, wall running should be out of the equation for this. Have one. you played a Wolfenstein game? Let's not go there. (laughs) Hey, I will say, I will say that is Wolfenstein has got my eternal respect because they put out a modern game in the past five years that had no multiplayer. It was a pure single player experience. Like, oh, where's the multiplayer? Fuck you. You don't get one. (laughs) Play the single player on on a harder difficulty if you want that. Okay, cool. And it was great. It was fantastic. (laughs) I like when games understand when multiplayer works and when it doesn't. Typically, shooters, you expect it. But if they don't have it, that's fine, as long as the campaign stands on its own. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, So there was also another new game. I think this one's coming out really soon. I can't remember the day. I think it's like next week. Wednesday, I thought I saw in the article. Um, There's a new game from the team that gave you Prison Architect. And this isn't a full-scale experience. This isn't designed to be a big blockbuster. Uh, And they've said it. Uh, It's a beautiful game, though. Very, very beautiful. Uh, think of Spelunking, 
shooting little individual rays of light. And when you hit something, it stays. And you're just going to be scanning your environment, just painting this beautiful canvas with all these different rays of light. It's, it's, it's hard, beautiful. It's a really hard thing to describe. Um, yeah. Just it, look it up. Technically, yeah. it's called ray casting is what they're doing. It, it is ray casting. Well, it's, it is a really cool rendering technique. And they're rendering the rendering technique, which is really odd, but is so beautiful with what they're doing. It's like, okay, imagine if, if your character is holding a gun, like standard first person shooter style, and you aim and you push a button. So what they do is they draw a line from the, the barrel of your, your ray gun and it goes out and wherever it hits, it makes a, a dot of light. And uh, in the area you're looking, it's, it's shaded in like these, this rainbow color. So you'll get a full picture of your environment made of these little uh, contiguous rainbow colored dots. So you're essentially painting with your gun so you can see. You're making a light bright by shooting a gun is what's happening. <laughs> yes. yes, that's kind a of. really good way to put that. It's, it's really hard to describe. So, so check out the article. Um, check out the game. It's called uh, Scanner Sombre. I hope I pronounced that right. Yes. S-O-M-B-R-E. Sombre. Yeah. Sombre. Scanner Sombre. Sombre. So check that out. Look on YouTube. There's some great videos of it. Uh, the sound looks really good. Uh, I'm very excited for this game, and I don't know why. Uh, Prison Architect was amazing. It has such a unique visual style. Yeah. If you're it's someone who really is. If you need a ton of stimulation, if you need people shooting at you, honking at you, driving at you, this is not for you at all well yeah this <laughs> is a very chill relax explore your environment in a very unique artistic way i was gonna say it, this yep. looks right up my alley because it looks like a pretentious art game i don't yeah, see by a guy with a full beard skinny pants drinking his like small Glasses. batch coffee that he roasted himself yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would totally buy this. yeah yeah i would totally buy this You're such a that's douche. totally up my alley right? too <laughs> Fuck yeah, pretentious art gamers unite. But yes, yes. Um, it is a very interesting game. Even if you have no interest in that style of game, you should look at this. It is visually video. unlike yeah. anything else. There is nothing yeah. else on the market like this. It's beautiful. Um, something else I wanted to get at. There was a study. Um, it's really weird how the study came out, but they're trying to correlate kids at a young age using cheat codes and mods and video games and how they're turning into cyber criminals as they grow older. <laughs> so they're essentially doing a correlation where all these guys are cyber criminals. What they do as kids and finding out that they did a lot of game modding and just oh. putting using cheat codes and updating INI files. A false equivalency. This, oh, is, this is correlation yeah. and causation. So if you are the type of person to know how to exploit systems and break into shit, I do a lot with computer security. I know how to do that shit. Some of it, I'm not like amazing or anything. Don't ask me to hack Facebook. I won't. Um, <laughs> but if you are a technical person and you know how to do that shit, you're going to naturally mod your fucking video games, right? Mm -hmm. if, if you are a technical person, if you like playing around with shit, of course you're going to use cheat codes. Of course you're going to try to break game engines. We, mm -hmm. we just like breaking shit because well, that's what hackers do. They're not saying at our age. They're saying when they were young kids, they were doing this. It, it, that's, that's how you get started on... Not the path to cybercrime, but the path to, you know, being even technologically literate, right? You throw a mm -hmm. bunch of mods into Vice City, and you're like, cool, I can run around as Mario in, in GTA. This is really fun. Um, and your motorcycles become Yoshi. Like, that's that's cool. It also shows that they know how to manipulate a file system, how they download and extract shit from the internet, overwrite certain files. They then learn how a DLL works and how DLL injection works and how overwriting stuff can make cool stuff happen in your video game. And they're like, oh, I wonder if I could do this thing. And it, it's just it's a long path of learning about tech to get better at it. And some of those people are going to turn to cybercrime. Some of those people are going to be programmers. Some of those people. Uh, are well, going to be worthless living in their mother's basement at the age of 45. Exactly. Damn. But we're not going to talk about 98% of gamers, all right? <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, I was doing some of this as a kid, but it was all I and I file manipulations, all I was doing. Right. It's literally all mm -hmm. jump height is five. Let's put that to 500. And then on Morrowind, I jump so high, I never come down. And now you have a job where your entire day is manipulating I and I files. No, it's not. Thank <laughs> God that would be miserable. <laughs> 
But um, I don't want to give that too much lip service because I think it's a bullshit study. Fuck they're them. realizing that they're losing the battle on violent games make violent kids. So they're trying to shift it somewhere else. This is what happens when They've you get a study. They've been trying to do that for years. This is what happens when you get a study that asks the entirely wrong question and, mm-hmm. and thus end up with the wrong answer. It's like asking all people who've committed vehicular homicide if they've ever driven a car. Yeah. This, There's now yeah. a correlation. If you drive a car, <laughs> you're going to kill someone Whoa, with it. We got to get these cars <laughs> off the streets. Well, that I agree with. Humans should not be driving these two-ton death mobiles. <laughs> people like, fucking watch YouTube while driving. Yeah. Those people those, are wrong. That's um, ridiculous. I've heard Unless this. they're watching our YouTube channel at 72 Pin Connector. Right. Yes. The only thing to watch while Just driving Don't is do the that. 72 Pin Connector podcast. <laughs> the station right over there that you're going to see down yes. there. Yeah. That is totally what you should be watching if you're driving. It's the only thing yes. sanctioned by the government to watch if you're driving. Yeah, right, right down there. Yep. That one. But, yeah. So, fun study. Bullshit study. We carry on. Uh, Nintendo is releasing a new console. <laughs> surprise and nintendo Why? is putting the nail in another cough uh, coffin to another console while keeping alive something no one expected so with nintendo switch coming out it is the perfect mobile platform so adam if you're nintendo what should you not be making any more of now that you've released the switch Oh, I don't know. Maybe another mobile console that plays games from the previous generation mobile console. <laughs> I, know, I don't know. Right? So they're releasing <laughs> not a new 3DS. They're releasing a new 2DS. They're making a 2DS XL. By the way, it looks awesome. It's special. Uh, the new Dragon Quest game. They're doing a slime edition of it. It looks fucking awesome. But mm-hmm. it's a new 2DS. More than that, this is actually kind of a functionality change. So it's mm-hmm. got, it doesn't just do what the 2DS did, which is take a 3DS, strip out all of the 3D shit and say, yeah, uh, you can give this to your three-year-old and have them chuck it. This thing's a fucking brick. You won't be able to break this. And it's, it's great. Mm-hmm. It's a fantastic system for kids. But this one, not only does that, they added a C-stick, they added Z buttons, uh, and it's compatible mm-hmm. with every game released on the new 3D uh, so 3DS XL. They're branding it with the same stickers and everything of the new 3DS XL. They're Fuck calling this the new 2DS XL. So, so you've got you've got the 3DS, you've got the 3DS XL, you've got the 2DS, the um, the new 3DS, and now the new 2DS XL, <laughs> super <laughs> awesome, fantastic. Uh, Office Edition Pro Plus Home yeah. thing. iPod right. Nano. Shuffle it. Um, it's, it's interesting because they are adding new buttons, which means they're expecting yeah. brand new games to come out for this that may or may not work in other places. So it will work on the new 3DS they, XL yeah. Pro Plus. It's not new buttons. The buttons have already been out there. No, not the Z mm-hmm. buttons, from what I understand. The Z buttons? Yes, it did add Z buttons. There are buttons on the back now that weren't there before. So you've always had huh. L and R. Now you've got Z, L, and Z, R. Oh, okay. So there is two new buttons. Yes, and the, the C stick, which I don't believe was there before, but I could be wrong. I don't have a new 3DS XL Nano Shuffle. I have um, the 3DS XL, the new one. Okay. You just got the C-Stick. Okay. But the thing to me that this is, you're going down the alley of, oh, they're adding this, this, this. I'm not even, I don't care about what it's adding. I care about what it's saying. It's Nintendo mm-hmm. making a statement saying, yeah, the 3DS, while it sold well, was not a good idea, and no one's using the 3D technology. Let's just give mm-hmm. you the console cheaper that does everything you really want. It's, it's yeah. a great price point, too. Uh, yeah, it it's looks 150 like- isn't it? Yeah, it's it's 150. It'll come out July 28th. Um, it's it's really interesting. Now, some people have compared this launch to the uh, Game Boy Advance Micro, uh, which was a super tiny like pocket edition of the Game Boy Advance mm. with a brilliant mm. screen. It was shitty for RPGs because the screen was really tiny, but it was a great little Game Boy Advance. Um, mm-hmm. I think this is different than that because this is adding functionality. It's not just yeah. a repackaged DS. If it was a repackaged DS, this wouldn't really mean anything uh, because Nintendo has, you know, after the DS came out, they released the Game Boy Micro and it was like, oh, see, the Game Boy's not dead. No, shh, the Game Boy's actually dead. Um, this doesn't say that to me. Uh, this says that they're, they're definitely trying to keep the DS brand alive. And I understand that because right. it prints money. 
They're keeping it alive for now. They're killing off 3DS. I yes. guarantee you they will not yes. be making more 3DSs well, yeah. come probably Christmas will be the last push you see of them, and then they will not be restocking them. Yeah. As Dobby said in chat, anyone who has a 3DS, you turned it on initially, like, oh, it's kind of pretty. You turn it back off and you play your game. I, I used yeah. the 3D functionality, but it, it wasn't ever very good. The only game where it was useful was Pilot Wings, where you needed the depth perception to, to accurately play the game. Everything else, it was just mm -hmm. kind of, oh, this is neat. Uh, but most people that I know do not use the 3D functionality. The intro to uh, Monster Hunter Generations with it on is beautiful. I mean, it is like, I'm looking at this, I'm like, this doesn't look like a handheld. This is great. Mm -hmm. And then you get the Pokemon, and I don't think anything was 3D enabled in Pokemon. Yeah. I so, don't remember. The new one, that is. What so, saying? I would have initially thought that with the release of the Switch, that that was their push for, you know, streamlining their business model to, okay, this is our thing. You can do everything with it because you can play it at home on your console or you can take it mobile. They might um, not be able to for a yeah, few reasons. So, so I thought it was weird that this would be coming out. It, it caught me off guard. I wasn't expecting it. But maybe it's not that bad of an idea. But I'm just so unfamiliar with, like, really, I'm unfamiliar with the DS series. I don't really know many of the games. I don't know how well it's doing. The, the, uh, the DS itself, the DS line has been one of Nintendo's hottest sellers. I mean, it basically mm -hmm. took over from the Game Boy. Um, but... If Nintendo is having problems, which uh, obviously they are, getting Switches out the door and onto shelves, um, mm -hmm. and they know that the DS sells this much, and every new revision sells about this much with this sort of bump in their graph, uh, you mm -hmm. know, one good way to get a nice little revenue bump is to launch a new system uh, with you know the same technology, but in a new shiny case, and maybe we'll slap some buttons on it. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think the DS will last for too much longer. Um, I, I think it's got, you know, two, three years left in its lifespan before Nintendo finishes moving to the Switch, but this is kind of a financial shot in the arm for the company. Well, see, this it's two different things for me. One, I think this is 100% what you said earlier. It's a Game Boy move. DS comes out, oh, we're going to run both lines. They try to prove it with the hardware, and then silently they kill off the Game Boy once everyone realizes the DS is where it's at. I think once the Switch gets sold enough, I mean, it's selling like hotcakes right now, but once they get enough adoption, they're going to kill mm -hmm. it off. That said, adoption right now is a manufacturing issue. Why in the fuck are you taking away from Switch manufacturing to make a system that came out 10 years ago? Well, this could different be answered by these, by these, yeah, it, it's, it's a completely different manufacturing process. You are throwing components into it and you are throwing money into it, but I, I think they're pretty fundamentally different on a hardware level. But uh, it's still manufacturing facilities. They're di part of the reason they've actually admitted to doing the discontinue of the NES is they need manufacturing facilities for the Switch. It, then I, I don't know. Now, now one, one thing uh, in the comments here of this uh, Kotaku article, uh, which is amazing for me to reference because comments on anything are shitty, but this is, this is a really good one. Uh, it's by RetroVote and uh, Mike Folly going back and forth. Um, RetroVote is asking literally why, and they were saying, hey, the Switch is going to take this over. Why are they shooting themselves in the foot? Uh, Mike responds, I wouldn't buy a Switch for a little kid. You know, the Nintendo Switch is not... Uh, a typical Nintendo console, right? You can mm -hmm. scratch the screen, you can easily break it. Dropping the Switch is probably not good for it, right? I mean, it's it's not good for any console, but like right. my GameCube has taken tumbles onto a concrete floor and it's a fucking tank. The Switch, not so much. Uh, the, yeah. the 2DS line, I mean, you could probably shoot this thing with a fucking rifle and it would still play <laughs> goddamn games. The fucking Game Boy, the original Game Boy, took a fucking yeah. shell, took a fucking explosive bomb uh, in, in a ship in, um, I want to say the Korean War or something, some war, uh, and they've got it on display in the Nintendo store in New York, still playing Tetris, plugged into AC, charred nice. and burned and, and destroyed. It's, it's an amazing <laughs> picture because the Game Boy is fucking indestructible. The Korean War was in the 50s. The, wait, what am I thinking? I'm thinking of something else. Never yeah, mind. Yeah, you're probably thinking of the Gulf War. <laughs> yes, I'm thinking of the Gulf War. Um, so... I, I totally agree with that. If you're going to buy a system for a kid, I wouldn't buy a Switch today. Like, like buy a Switch, put it in your living room, and make sure they can't take it out of the damn, the damn uh, dock. If you want something on the go, 
the DS fits a kid better, right? You can chuck mm-hmm. this thing into a washing machine and it would be fine. I think that, like, if you had the kid in the car, give him the Switch, no problem. It's the mm-hmm. idea of the kid moving around with the Switch that becomes a problem. Right. Because the Switch's screen, um, it is scratch prone to the point where when you take, if you take it out of the dock improperly, you can scratch the screen, which is why some people are putting sleeves over the front of the dock so you don't scratch it. Mm. Because there's actually a pretty good corner on that thing. So if you Mm -hmm. angle it and pull it up over that corner, you're going to end up cutting it. I'm actually in in my wish list right now, in in my Amazon Nintendo Switch wish list where all my games and controllers are. I've actually got a a $5 um, protective glass screen protector in there so Mm -hmm. I can label it. Yeah, Yeah, Don't do that. I'm going to. Get get the cool little decorative thing over the front of the dock. No, because I want to take my Switch places. And and it has saved my phone so many times. This is my third... Uh, glass screen protectors. It's like not like the plasticky Palm Pilot shitty screen protectors, uh, but mm-hmm. but my phone's glass front is amazing. I can throw it in my pocket with my keys and scratch the shit out of it, and then peel off my little thing, put a new one on for five bucks, and I'm done. I want to be able to do that. You have your phone in the, the same pocket as your keys. I think you need to reevaluate your pants distribution. Yes, and I, I, have, distribution. I have. I have. I actually. Um, <laughs> Like literally hours after I applied my first glass screen protector, a flash drive became uncapped in my pocket. And it was the same pocket my phone was in because I was I was at a client site working and it jackknifed right into the glass screen protector and just tore up the whole front of it. And I was freaking. I was like, oh, my God, my beautiful phone. It's brand new and peeled off the screen protector. Nope. That glass took the entire sheer force. It was awesome. Yeah, I agree with him. You got to rethink your uh, pocket (laughs) distribution game. Phone gets its own dedicated pocket, front and left. Yes. Nothing else goes in there unless it's another phone. Front right. Front Sorry. left. Front right. What are you talking You're about? You're fucking heathens. Front. Your I'm keys. right-handed. Your keys are front right. I get my phone right. out more often my than I get my keys out. keys are front left. Out. Yeah, see, see right-handed? So yeah, just, you, right-handed, you put, you whatever you use the most goes in your right your, side pockets. You put your phone where you put your gun. Holster and phone, same thing. See, I put you're not looking at your phone when you're pulling your gun, right? Everything else is in the right pocket. Everything. My it's keys, my flash it's, drives, oh, it's everything. Either, it's either, that, girl, give me your digits, or dude, I'm robbing you. One that actually makes me uncomfortable to think about <laughs> the things in my left pocket and my right pocket. <laughs> it's yeah. giving me anxiety. It's like, have you ever switched wallet pockets? <laughs> oh, I got a front pocket wallet, dog. I don't oh, okay. have to sit on shit. If you sit on your wallet and you've never done this before and you really want to feel uncomfortable, switch the pockets. Oh, oh my no. God, it's one of the worst feelings in the oh, world. Oh, it's horrible. If you've got... It, if you've got room in your front pocket, I pretty heavily recommend a front pocket wallet. If you don't keep a lot of stuff, I'm kind of minimalist with my wallet. This is it. Oh my god! Right hold there. On. Hold on here. Hold it's, on. Look. Look at the so, shit. So people, yeah. people who can't see it's got a pocket it's with my money and cards. Drive. I've, I've got. I've got a Costanza, George Costanza style, like full of shit wallet, and this is better than it has been. Actually, here's my phone in comparison. His Jesus. wallet is thinner than his phone. Or about the same thickness. <laughs> so, so I, same thickness with the case. If, if I'm in a strange city, especially like a crowded city or a crowded area, I will switch my my wallet from my back pocket to my front just to yeah. throw the the pickpockets. I will keep because you got to get pretty pocket. fresh with me to get in my front pockets. Yeah. Uh, if I'm actually, getting pickpocketed, I want a little caressing. I want a little love. <laughs> yeah, I will actually walk around with my hand in my back pocket when I'm in crowded situations. <laughs> Yeah, but um, I do want to uh, bring something back real quick. Dark Soul asked a question about if we see a V2 of the Switch coming in the next couple of years. It's fucking Nintendo. And I can really see something coming. I don't know about two years, but definitely mm-hmm. within three. But maybe within two, I can see them doing something to it's like a Gen 2 up the battery life. I don't see them mm-hmm. doing anything with processing power. What you have processing Mm -hmm. power today is what you're going to have forever with that thing, probably. I see them doing something with battery so that you can make it more of a mobile console. I would have agreed with you, um, except that the new line that that's called the new line, that's the fucking model name. And it drives me up a wall. The new line of the 3DS did up the the processing power you can play games on the new 3ds yeah, and which you is can't what, play on the original 3ds because it's not the same thing it's that's okay you hate it but here's what you have to realize they're using the word new to indicate that it's not the yes. same console it is a second handheld it is it's an iteration i i, I 
can see a new Switch coming out. Now, now I totally agree with you. They are going to bring out a, a V2 of the Switch within the next year or two. Better battery life, maybe a, an actual glass screen instead of a hardened plastic screen. Um, maybe maybe something where you can't actually put in the Joy-Cons the wrong way and get them stuck there. You know, just little tiny quality of life improvements. A, a better um, a fucking kickstand for the console. Um, there's a lot of little tweaks that they could do to the Switch with a little bit more time and a little bit more money that they couldn't do right on this launch. Um, well, they were hedging. And anyway, it's Nintendo. We're going to have different colored Switches. Well, they've already it's announced yellow. So. Yeah, it, it's going to happen because I'm for waiting for my clear atomic purple Switch is what I want. Dude, I would actually buy that. That would be awesome. The, oh, right? Um, so I have pro controllers. For the record, I will say anyone who's got a Switch doesn't have them, get them. The button presses are nice, really stiff, rigid, good. The D pads really well. The controller fits just like a 360, and it's clear black. Yeah, which is really nice. cool. If if you do anything, if you are planning on buying fighting games for the Switch, you cannot use a Joy-Con. You you just can't. You have to get a Pro controller. Unless you're really good with joystick fighting, not not not, no. not arcade joystick, but like thumbstick. Yeah, no, no, you you don't want to do that. Get yourself a Pro controller. Do yourself a favor. I. I understand why the Joy-Con is built the way it is, but God, it pains me that there's no actual D-pad on that thing. Yeah, that's it's an oversight on them, but they, I think they will have V2. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that's enough of the Switch. We've talked plenty of Switch the last few. A lot of Switch. <laughs> yeah, well, it's really fucking A lot awesome. of Nintendo, a lot of Switch, but they've had a lot going on, so that makes yeah. sense. Um, last tidbit before we get out of here. Um, Game that hits pretty close to my heart, Shadow of War. Going to be a sequel to uh, Shadow of Mordor. They have released a trailer of how the new Nemesis system is going to work. And it is pretty fucking rad. They're taking that awesome Nemesis system. For those who don't know, think of a pyramid where the very top is your ruler. And underneath him, you have two subs, three subs, blah, 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 all the way down. With the Nemesis Mm -hmm. system, those people are randomly out in the world, everywhere. You can kill the leader and someone else gets promoted up. But you have this ability to control, mind control people. So you can easily mind control someone at the bottom of the ranks. And then what you can do is kill people above him and help him promote up to the point where he is the leader of that squad. And then you can have him bring those guys in to help you fight. It's really cool. They're implementing a new stronghold situation with this where there is multiple trees of these orcs. And they all respond to a stronghold. And depending on what kind of tribe the leader of that stronghold's from will shape the environment in that area. Hmm. Hmm. So it's going to be really interesting. There's a lot of nuance and depth to this where I'm not quite comfortable trying to explain it all because it would get really super boring. But it is a really, really cool addition onto something that I felt that more devs would have taken. This mm-hmm. eventually this nemesis system is going to catch on. People are going to see it and say, oh, my God, we need something like this. I just I, I love the idea and it really fits that game well. I just mm-hmm. I really hope it doesn't become I'm trying to think of something now. Well, uh, it, but I, I really hope it doesn't become the quick time event of, of action games oh, where everything yeah. has a fucking nemesis system. Grand Theft Auto has to have a nemesis system. Uh, Burnout has to have a nemesis system. Uh, you know, everything like that. There are games where it makes sense, though, like Mafia 3. Yes. Mafia yes. structure game. I mean, that in itself has ranks. Yeah. It, it mm-hmm. works great for that. Like you get in the ear of someone and then you help him by killing off people above him to get him to be the top of the mafia and then he, all that kind of stuff. I mean, there's some really cool applications, but yeah, by all means, like GTA, I'd feel really weird. Yeah. Uh, unless there's like a crime boss mini game or something. Yeah. But as the whole structure of the game, I mean, the Nemesis system is a really big piece to sh- the Shadow games. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I, it's going to be really fun, really cool. It's a great thing for open world because it means the world shapes around with what you do in a really yeah. cool way. But we'll see when it comes out. Um, the trailer's out there for that. I think that one launches in August. So once again, there's going to be another great AAA title. Game of the Year debates this year are going to be fantastic because holy fuck, there are some really <laughs> yeah. good games coming out. Yes. <laughs> and have been some fantastic games that have already came out. Oh, yeah. Speaking of which, Adam, um, for next week, 
There is one demand of something you must speak of. You have to do it. And Resident may, Evil 7. We you'll may, be fired. <laughs> yes. So um, for those who really, really want to hear, at the end of next week's cast, we'll have Adam go all spoiler to the wall. Super spoilerific. But we are not going to put that in the main part of the cast because we do not want people to get spoiled on a fantastic game that is still really new. Yep. But Adam, be prepared. Will. Will do. And speaking of that... Um, PSA for everyone listening. After this week, we are going to start going to the standard Saturday, 9 p.m. Eastern time for our podcast. Will be our new time. We will update all the locations where we have that information. As well as I will be MIA for the next two weeks yes. at minimum, potentially three. So um, these two will be running the show. Oh, God. Should be without a hitch. So um, without any further ado, I think that's all we got. So... Hit at us at Twitter if you have anything you'd like to see us do or talk about, like spoiler cast, games you'd like to have us play so we can talk about, any of that kind of stuff. And with that, I think that's all we have for you. So until next week, game on. See you, everyone.